This is the Helios uh, 6 inch achromatic uh, refractor. Helios is the name for a star watcher before the year 2000. And it is a F5 refractor, very fast. Propeller 750, diameter of the objective 150, so F5. And the F5 telescope are very fast. And with the butter, uh, diagonal, and a 28mm skull watcher, eyepiece 2 inch. The objective is uh, 150 cm. It was the biggest you can easily use and handle in one, as one person on a normal mount. Anything bigger will be really cumbersome and needs a very specialized mount. The mount for this telescope I'm using is a altazimuth mount. This is Sky T uh, 2 uh, and it's really handy. The tripod is a uh, Celestron Omni 127XLT uh, equal to EQ5 and I can put one here, one here, another one here if I don't use this uh, counterweight. This is the view to the 28mm eyepiece. I'm looking at the moon, it's a crescent moon, so it's a uh, two second or third day of the uh, lunar phase. The age of the moon is three days or two days, probably three days mostly. And uh, so I'm looking at the daylight uh, and into the crescent moon. And you can see the clouds are coming and passing. So it's not as good as uh, the view is not as good as when it is the sky background is dark. But yet you can see, you can see some craters. I can see Ptavius, the large crater. Uh, the camera doesn't show justice to what you can see visually. It is a very neat and clean image. Uh, I try to enhance the features on this photograph, but the actual view is more, uh, you know, detailed than this. When you visually s look at it, you see a lot more. And I have put some of the names on this uh, image also. Oh, the sharpest images I've ever seen of the M42 uh, is with this uh, um, Skywatcher Helios 6 inch refractor, achromatic. Uh, the only comparable view is the one that I had with the Maxitov. I'm using the APM 20mm eyepiece, 100 degrees. This is the first time I can actually see some faint. Uh, gray green pink color in the m42 great orion nebula i don't think this is a chromatic aberration because the nebula practically doesn't have chromatic aberration it's very diffuse it's not a concentrated uh, object like a star so what i'm saying is actually the color of it it's easy to pick it up with the camera but with the eye really is the first time i'm seeing it with this the fracture now. Visually, this is what you can see with this uh, telescope. Uh, a little bit colors I've exaggerated, uh, and the photo shows a little bit more. But that is M42, as you could see with this telescope. Beautiful. This is my mobile phone camera, Huawei P10, uh, P30 Pro. I use it for you know for astrophotography. And uh, exposure, I will write at the end uh, how much is 400,009. It's almost like a Sony uh, 7 Alpha. And uh, I compare it with the 8 inch uh, Meet LX90 uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope. Uh, this is the best result I had with this. Now I'm going to show you the result with the meet LX90 that's the one and as you can see now I put them together beside each other the left side is the 16 inch refractor and the right side is the LX90 8 inch CT telescope I feel that I could see more contrasting more color in the refractor also I photographed uh, and I could see 
the M1 Crab Nebula, the supernova remnant in the constellation, that's the Zeta Tauri, the brightest star to the right side, lower part of, and the M1 is to the top side uh, in the left. It was amazing. I could photograph it even with the cam, uh, with my mobile phone. And uh, this is a really good result. I'm happy with the results I got. Okay, I'm using the six-inch uh, Skywatcher refractor. It's a Acromat, and it's 15 centimeter objective lens size. It's elegant. The purity of the image is amazing. Okay, I use this uh, telescope to look at the uh, Orion Belt region. I could see the Orion Nebula. The lens is very good. 15 centimeter of the lens objective lens a doublet is well baffled also inside the tube so stray light uh, from external sources cannot really bother you too much uh, at the same time uh, i was looking at the sigma orionis the eight uh, star system just down the orion belt omega uh, diagonal i was using and the 50 millimeter celestron silver top plus all eyepiece that's amazing eyepiece for looking at this object Really nice, nicely framed. The two brighter members of the low triplet, those M65 and M66, they're very clear and visible. The other NGC one is a little bit fainter, but I'm surprised that's very well visible. You can see it. I'm now looking at the M51 and its companion through this uh, six inch refractor skull watcher. And it's beautiful, <laughs> it's big. This uh, 50 millimeter Celestron plus hole actually has a very wide field of view and yet the galaxy is so big it takes almost one fourth of the field of view. One fifth I should say, yes. Very visible extended object, brighter than the, any member in the Lowe's triplet. Now I'm using the Skull Watcher 28mm multi coated uh, 2 inch tele uh, eyepiece, and I can see the NGC neighbor of the M51 also close to it. They're all surrounded with, with a halo around them. It's beautiful. It's one of the most beautiful scenes I've seen. This is a good eyepiece also. 28mm is the optimum. Um, maybe I will get the Skull Watcher later. Skull Watcher um, 82 degrees also. Nirvana. It's, it's all sold. You cannot find it. Anybody who bought it, they're just lucky. It's one fifth of the pr Oh, no. One third of the price of a uh, Teleview uh, Nagler 31 millimeter tape 5 and yet it delivers as good as that and a little bit even better because 25 and uh, 28 millimeter is 3 millimeter less and gives a darker contrastier background Wow I have now decreased the focal length of the eyepiece from 28 to 14 half magnification doubled i can see clearly both of the N um, m51 and his companion clearly i can see the halo uh, uh, shadow of the halo of the spiral arms of the m51 going toward the uh, companion this view with this 6 inch telescope is very similar to what I could see with the 12 inch telescope. <laughs> it punches above its weight. This is equal to double its aperture in the Newtonian. <laughs> it's a refractor. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, I just want to show you. This is the 28 millimeter again Skywatcher eyepiece. The eyepiece that comes standard with the larger refractors and reflectors of the Skywatcher. And setting is this bright street light. And it's despite that, I can see the Crab Nebula M1 with this. It's so, this guy is so bright, almost orange. But I can't with this see the M1. <laughs> I found the Zeta Tauris and M1 was just there. <laughs> so beautiful. And I'm using the Skywatcher Nirvana 16 mm 82 degrees, looking at the M1. Uh, the details, uh, the base and the slight filaments I can see in the Crab Nebula. This is a supernova remnant at the center of it is a neutron star, of course invisible to us at this magnitude. As magnitude 16, I think. Yet, I can see details that I only could see in a, a reflector, Newtonian, Dobsonian, uh, twice the size of this 6 inch uh, refractor telescope. So, this 6 inch shows me the details I could see with the, <laughs> the 12 inch reflector. <laughs> it's so elegant. And now I'm looking at the M35 star cluster, open star cluster in the Gemini and the NGC star cluster beside it. Probably is one of the best views of, I had of this cluster. Mm, yeah, probably the best. I can, I can compare it slightly with the 12 inch reflector, the Sonia reflector view, but this one is a little bit sharper. And this sky background is darker and more beautiful.